Welcome to From the Quarries. Tonight's presentation, Gavels in Freemasonry, is a short but fascinating examination of what is quite a niche topic in Freemasonry. It was written by Paul M. Bessel, and it, the copy that I have is undated. There are references to a number of different works in the body of the text, and I'll include those in the description that goes with this video. I hope you enjoy it. Good evening, and welcome to tonight's presentation, From the Quarries, an archive of Masonic lore. Perhaps no lodge appliance or symbol is possessed of such deep and absorbing interest to the craft as the master's mallet or gavel. Nothing in the entire range of Masonic paraphernalia and formulary can boast of an antiquity so unequivocally remote. Joseph F. Ford, Early History and Antiquities of Freemasonry. Gavels, hammers, mallets or mauls have both practical and symbolic use in lodges and other meetings, as well as both practical and symbolic uses in operative and speculative Freemasonry. Keeping order and punctuating actions. The gavel has generally been adopted by Masonic bodies and many other groups as a means to call meetings to order, keep order, announce the results of votes and otherwise punctuate the actions of the group. However, it is a mistake for the presiding officer to try and stop noise and keep order by pounding with the gavel. The use of a hammer to keep order was common in medieval institutions, such as an Elizabethan guild in Exeter where, the governor having a small hammer in his hands made for the purpose, when he will have silence to be had shall knock the same upon the board, and whoever do talk after the second stroke to pay without recension two pence. There is also a reference in a biography of the founder of the Cistercians to the harsh strokes of the wooden mallet used for calling the brethren together. Symbol of Authority In a larger sense, Gavels symbolize the executive power, as this is the instrument which strikes blows, or it can be thought of as a symbol of authority without the use of force. The gavel is an emblem of authority of the master in governing the lodge. At the installation of a master, he is informed, upon being tendered this implement, that it constitutes the essential element of his authority over the assembled brethren, without which his efforts to preserve order and subordination would be ineffectual. It is the symbol that inducts him into the possession of the Masonic Lodge. In the Middle Ages, mallets were thrown and all ground over which they traversed were acknowledged to be possessed by the thrower. This practice gave rise to the symbolism of the mallet, indicating the master's possession of his lodge. A somewhat different use of a thrown hammer is shown in an English ordinance of 1462, which is said to have declared that lewd women should remain as far from the territory of a Masonic lodge as a hammer could be hurled. The appropriate item for this purpose should be wooden, with a flat surface at one end and a pointed surface at the other. French and Spanish Freemasons sometimes refer to it as the President's Hammer and use an instrument that is flat at both ends, then slightly pinched and larger again in the middle. The gavel should not resemble a setting maul. The gavel is sometimes confused with the setting maul, which is a different instrument used for different purposes. The gavel is an implement of both the master and his wardens, and is an emblem of power, while the maul is a heavy wooden hammer with which the mason drives his chisel. The maul is also the weapon with which the master was traditionally said to have been slain, 
so it is an emblem of violent death. It is incorrect to use a gavel instead of a heavy maul in the dramatization of the third degree. It is also inappropriate to use a little auctioneer's hammer in place of a gavel, as this may connote that the initiate is being sold. The gavel of the master of a lodge is also called a hiram, because, like that architect, it governs the craft and keeps order in the lodge, as Hiram did in the temple, or because of the use made of the maul in the third degree. As early as 1739, both gavels and mauls were referred to by that name. A negative sense of this implement is found in the Bible, in Proverbs 25 verse 18. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbour is a maul, and a sword, and a sharp arrow. Use by Operative and Speculative Masons Mackey and Coyle say the gavel used as a hammer has one flat face opposite the sharp end, so that from the top it resembles a gabled roof on a house, and because of this gable becomes the German word Gipfel, meaning summit or peak, or Giebel, and then the English word gavel, although in German lodges the gavel is called the hammer. It is one of the oldest working tools used by man, as illustrated by stories of Scandinavian mythology, where Thor, the principal god, was given a special hammer or mallet which always struck its targets with great force and then returned to the thrower without any injury to him. Symbolically, as the hammer of Thor destroyed his enemies, so it should continue to be used to destroy the enemies of that which is good and true. It is used on stone to make a rough shaping or dressing, with the finishing done with a chisel and mallet or maul. Gavel is defined in the Oxford English Dictionary of 1901 as a mason's setting maul or a presiding officer's hammer, and it is said to be an American usage. The name gavel was not known in England before the 19th century. Freemasons are taught that the common gavel is one of the working tools of an entered apprentice. It is used by operative masons to break off the corners of rough ashlars and thus to fit them better for the builder's use. It is not adapted to giving polish or ornamentation to the stone and hence it should symbolise only that training of a new Freemason which is designed to give some limited skill and moral training, and to teach that labour is the lot of man, and that qualities of heart and head are of limited value if the hand be not prompt to execute the design of the master. Its meaning has been extended to include the symbolism of the chisel, to show the enlightening and ennobling effects of training and education. The gavel is adopted in speculative Freemasonry to admonish us of the duty, often painful, of divesting our minds and consciences of all the vices and impurities of life, thereby fitting our bodies or minds as living stones for the spiritual building, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The gavel represents the force of conscience, it is our willpower through which we govern our actions and free ourselves from the debasing influences. It requires repeated exercise of our willpower to subdue our passions. Willpower is common to all, and it is fittingly symbolised by the common gavel. But just as the gavel is of no worth unless it is used, so is our willpower. The gavel is an instrument common to the highest and the lowest in the lodge. The common gavel is shown to each entered apprentice to remind him that symbolically he should use it in Freemasonry to divest himself of the vices and superfluities of life. Years later, even when one has attained the highest rank in the lodge by becoming its master, the same implement of gavel is placed in his hand as a reminder that we all need to continue to strive for improvements in our manner and character. Albert Pike felt that the mallet and chisel and gavel symbolised the development of the intellect of each individual and of society. 
He wrote, A man's intellect is all his own, held direct from God, an inalienable thief. It is the most potent of weapons. Society hangs spiritually together. The free country in which intellect and genius govern will endure. To elevate the people by teaching loving kindness and wisdom, with power to him who teaches best, and to develop the free state from the rough ashlar. This is the great labor in which masonry desires to lend a helping hand. For more Masonic podcasts, videos, music, texts, and artwork, visit fromthequarries.com or subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook accounts by searching From the Quarries.